Don't be afraid. Because, <laughs> you know, God, God, is, God has a blessing for America that we haven't tapped into yet. Because we're too busy being afraid. Because of the voices, even the voices in the pulpits. But I just heard something this week, and, and if you know, if you know this ministry, you know anything about me, I preach a lot of redemption. Jesus loves being the redeemer. And there's nothing he loves more than redeeming mankind. Redeeming nations, redeeming cities. Continents, countries, you name it. He loves redeeming things. Now, that's one of the things I feel he's the best at. It's like, oh, Lord, you're so wonderful. You do that so well. You know, has he not redeemed things back to you you thought could never happen? Redeemed your time, redeemed your finances, redeemed your health. If you think about it, Anything that has been redeemed in your life, he has taken the messes, the hurts, the wounds, the sicknesses, diseases, the lack, the lost, anything you can think of. And if he turns it around and he brings a healing in any situation, he has redeemed it. Because he's the redeemer. Why wouldn't he redeem America? Because he loves to redeem. He loves to redeem. And a lot of the remnant here is here tonight. Who's the remnant? Oh, yeah. yeah. We love the Lord. We're trusting him. We're looking to him. Uh, we, we, need to feel, well, we need to feel safe. That's one thing the Lord has shown me is the bride of Christ needs to feel safe. She doesn't, she feels vulnerable. And she needs to feel safe. You can say you feel safe. You can, you can uh, make a statement. You can do a faith statement. Take a blue in the face doesn't mean it's going to happen. Unless you believe it. Because a lot of things that we say, we say in fear. You ever done that? I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I'm scared. Help. <laughs> I've done that. Anybody? You know. <laughs> but you know what? If your kids did that, if those of you that have children, and if you don't have children, think of your own sister, your brother, somebody that you love, me, uh, nephew, niece, somebody that is, is uh, child, childlike even, and they get scared. Don't you just want to put your arms around them and tell them everything's going to be okay? And you're made in your father's image. Let us make man in our image. Why did he say our? I a new word for 2016. I am so excited. Why did he say, let us make man in our image? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's just take the Holy Spirit. Let us make man so that they could comfort one another. Let's make them in our image so that they, that they are comforters. They follow what we do, and they comfort, comfort you, comfort you, my people. Counsel, give, give sound advice when it's needed. Lead others to Christ, lead people to good things. Teach people, Holy Spirit's a teacher too, Teach people how to walk in the power of their creator. The Holy Spirit is the power on the earth. I didn't say that. God says that. Holy Spirit's the one that will never, ever leave us. Don't take this in the wrong way, but Jesus left. He went back to be with the Father, sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. He said, it's to your benefit that I go. If I go, then I can you know, release the Holy Spirit, give the Holy Spirit to you, and he will never, ever leave you, ever. It's like the final seal.
And I love to say this. It's Jesus' other self, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, God himself, holy in spirit, God will never leave us. <coughs> so let us make man in our image. Walk in, in forgiveness. Extending the love when it's needed. Not being a destroyer, but a builder. Not sowing negative, fearful things, but sowing the good things, because it's the goodness of God that brings people to repentance. Where Jesus laid down his life, So that you don't have to. You're living sacrifices. I'm a living sacrifice. You know how much easier it would be to be martyred in a moment and be gone be with the Lord? Do you know how hard it is to be a living, living sacrifice? I know you know. And so he says, well, let us make man of our image that follow after us and they walk out in love like we do. And they redeem. And they forgive. And they rebuild the ancient ruins. And they come in the name of the Lord. And they heal. And restore. And bring deliverance. So if we're made in God's image. And we are. Do you believe that? You're made in God's image? I mean goodness gracious. I don't think we've tapped into it. Now, I put something festive on tonight on purpose. You know, something you would wear at New Year's. Because it's a new year. And I wanted to make it gold. You know, have the sparkly gold in it. And I wanted it to be festive. Even though I haven't felt my best, I'm not going to dress how I feel. <laughs> Do you understand? I had a friend, Lorraine Daniel. She's gone on to be with the Lord, an awesome lady. Lived in California. I mean, she lived to, to a nice older age. But she dressed up for the Lord. She felt like that she wasn't going to dress like she felt. Her husband had left her. He'd started at the brothel, if you could believe that. He was a pastor. She was a pastor's wife. You know, the first lady. Before they start calling herself. First, what is it? First lady, first wife? I don't know what they call herself. Forget. Anyway. And she was happy. She had everything. They had a beautiful church, beautiful house, beautiful clothes, everything. And in a moment, she lost it all. And I'm not kidding you. She's another miracle that was waiting for money. And I was withholding it. The Lord kept telling me, I want you to write a check. I'm talking to Mark because Mark and I were talking about it. So I want you to write a check to Lorraine Daniel for $250. I, this is way back, you guys, in the 70s. And I said, Okay, Lord. I mean, I said, okay, my husband would be, he was okay with it. He's a prosperous businessman back then and everything. He was okay with that. I kept putting it off. I'm thinking maybe, did I really hear you? <laughs> you ever do that? Did I really hear you, Lord? And anyway, I'm on a bind trail, but it's, it's important. Finally, I call her on the phone. I said, Lorraine, this is sure. Hi, honey. You know, can you meet with me? So we met at the mall or at the restaurant or something. I can't remember. When I would meet, when I would stay at the mall, it would be like when you get something to eat. And I brought the check to her. And she started crying. She also was in her closet and praying that she needed to pay her rent. You know, 200 of that paid her rent back then. <laughs> or, you know, 
and she needed to pay her rent. And God already had the provision for her. And we had it, and it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna take us down financially by any rate. You know, that particular I know, I know some of you that God's had to give you last. It was that wasn't the case. It was, you know, easy to do it. And so, but she was praying for her rent. And I, I'm sure she needed some grocery money. And she'd been crying out to the Lord. And she had been doing, she knew the Lord knew what she needed. And she knew the Lord said that he was going to provide for her. But it hadn't happened. And so she was like wondering what God was up to when it was going to happen. Do you understand? She was doubting. I, I, I guess I heard him. This is Lorraine. He said that she was crying and it's making her depressed and feel sick and everything. So here's my point. I asked her if she'd meet me. I didn't tell her what for. And she dressed up. And she's the one I always dressed up my whole life. My mother don't know where I came from. She thinks I'm from another planet. My sisters all the way up wore designer jeans and white blouses tucked in with skinny belts. And a very tiny, slender, see my I mean, very tiny, slender sisters. And I was tiny and tiny. I mean, I was in three, size three jeans once. And they were just tiny. And so they would come, there'd be, you could tell the pictures, because here would be my sisters and all these jeans. Remember, honey, and these white blouses and jeans? And they might have a colorful blouse on it, but here they all are in their jeans and sandals moving to California. Here's Shirley, decked out. The oddball. I love dressing up. I just loved it. Mother doesn't understand it. Probably she's in heaven. She's probably asking the Lord about it tonight. Why she do that? So I meet her, and she's dressed up. And we were just talking, and I was kind of hadn't told her yet because I was a little nervous and embarrassed because I would help this money, Bob. You know, she needed it. And so then she was talking about when you, man, you're depressed and you don't feel good, dress up in the, in the best you can, get a friend or something, go meet for even a Coca-Cola. Get out. Don't dress like you feel, but dress like you like to feel. Okay, so I wanted to get that in there. So we're sitting there. So I pulled this check out and I said, Lorraine, I have something for you. And I gave it to her and of course I told you she started crying and said she had been in her closet praying. And I said, well, Lorraine, the Lord told me this like two weeks ago. And I, I didn't know if I was hearing him and then I knew I was hearing him and then I didn't call. So I was withholding the blessing God already had for her. That's the point I want to make. There's a blessing out there for you guys, and somebody's withholding it. It's on the way. But some dumbbell like me, for Lorraine, that didn't jump on what God said right then, and, and you know, call her up and meet her and give her that. Because I was thinking about it and weighing it. You know, and, and, and wondering what to do. And don't worry, I'm not going to get you up for some big offering. Because if you don't want to give, that's your business. I'm just telling you a story of what happened. So when she told me what had happened with her and everything that she'd been waiting in, and then I knew some of her story, and then she shared with what she'd gone through and her husband and... and uh, the brothel, and losing everything, and she was, and she would tell you the truth. She says, I was so conceited, she said. Had everything. Wore the big pretty hats. And when she cut strut the shirt, she had her in her, you know. So she admitted her vanity in the position she had. Then she lost it all. She lost it all. The point is, is that she was able to admit that she thought she was above, you know, 
and she thought she had it made, or she knew she had it made, or whatever. She had a big, gorgeous, beautiful house. Hi, beautiful ladies. She had everything she wanted. And then when she lost it overnight, and you can lose stuff overnight. And I and, and please don't come to me after this meeting and say, well, that's negative. You're not, you know, you're not in faith. Yes, I am in faith. But things we would not need Mary Hickey's ministry if we didn't have a need. She teaches us on how to get our needs met. How to trust in Jesus for breakthroughs. Is that not the truth? So my husband, 10 years ago when he had the stroke, we lost his health. We lost our friendship for a year. I mean, because he, he had this, it took a year for him just to come back to what was called average day, everyday living. He, we, he was uh, in real estate. We lost the business overnight. Am I telling the truth, honey? Overnight, like night and day. But God restored us, and he's the redeemer. That's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Just because something's happened to you, just because there's some loss or something negative has happened or some change in your life doesn't mean that's your, that's your life for the rest of your life. God's going to redeem it. He's going to redeem everything back to you. So this lady... When she was telling me her story, but she also told me how God had me. God dealt with her through the loss. She became compassionate for a single woman. She didn't look her nose down and think, well, what did you what what sin did you do for this to happen to you? She didn't do any of that. And she stood on faith. She had to come back to she had to come back to live on total faith. It was shocking to her system. So it happened to me. You can't believe what I went through. I was like carried around with this pretty pink pillow by my husband. You know? Didn't you, honey? <laughs> Did everything pay for me to minister? Rent the building? Pay for me to minister? Did everything. And then all of a sudden, everything gets cut off. And the shocking reality of having to walk in faith and believe God for a new normal. Did anybody understand a new normal? But God did it. So this lady Lorraine, and this is this is years ago. She's gone to be with the Lord, so I won't lose my reward. So I'm sitting there listening to her story. She was just so happy that, that God had the provision two weeks prior. She wasn't crying the two weeks before. She started crying. She started crying the day I started withholding it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm causing her pain. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not being obedient. That's what I'm trying to tell you. True story. God knows it's true. So long story short, I went to my husband and his brother. We had a business in California, Viking Pacific Excavating and Grading Business. And I said to my husband, brother-in-law, and sister-in-law, there's this minister lady that I feel we're supposed to support monthly. What do you think? They said, what, what are you talking about? And I said, I'd like to make $250 a month. I think that's what it was, wasn't it, honey? Not more than three. I mean, this, they said, absolutely, you know, let's do it. So we did that. It wasn't anything for us. Because we had a business, you know, we were giving a top, you know, giving it. But it was everything to her. It meant everything to her. And let me tell you what happened. I didn't go to my mailbox and there wasn't $50,000 in it. That, that didn't happen to me. Until he had the stroke. And we needed help. I still never had $50,000 to him. But 
when we had a need, God brought back. Okay? We started reaping what we had sowed for somebody else. God started taking care of it. I'm just trying to tell you something. And if you've never done that, he'll still take care of you. He will still take care of you. He's so merciful and he's so full of grace. But I had a prophet say, you and Ormond have so much seed in the ground from helping people. And when she said that, her name was Eileen Fisher. She said, you have so much seed in the ground, Shirley. God's going to take care of you. And I went, see, so much seed in the ground because when you don't need fruit to pop up from a seed, you don't think about the seed you have in the ground. You're sowing your seed, but you don't think about reaping and you don't think about the increase in, in you do when you're, when, okay, when Marilyn Hickey would be preaching on go to things in California, she always came to Melody Man. Little powerhouse. Then I would think about it, and I would think, oh, okay, let's see. Should I put a name to my seed? You know that, you know, like Laura Roberts would put a name to your seed and all that. Because I didn't, I didn't know enough to do that because we were prosperous. And we didn't need to put a name to our seed. Does that make sense? But what we didn't know but there was a lean season coming. So I'll put a name to your seed. I didn't know to do that, okay? But God was merciful anyway. And I have seen God be merciful to people. How many of you, by a show of hands, and I want everybody to look around, you have seen people, being, God be merciful, unbelievably merciful to them, and they didn't deserve it? He loves it. He loves to redeem. He loves to pull people back up. He loves to restore them. Does that mean you go out and you be a, you know, miserable and, and unforgiving and all the stuff that we can name? No. But how many of you love your loved ones and, the, and you know how honored they've been and by a show of hands again you still want God to redeem them and save them? If we feel that way, how much more does he? And if you don't feel that way, ask God to give you compassion for them. And he will. He will. Thank you. Yeah, there may be a few people in here that have actually heard a word I was in prayer, you know, a day or two before the new year. And I believe I heard the Holy Spirit say, are you going to ask me what I'm going to do in 2016? And I was like, yes, I, I definitely am, since you reminded me. Uh, he's given me words uh, sometimes for years. Uh, 2016 gave me a, an awesome, encouraging word for 2016. Uh, I was hearing 2016 will be a year of restoration for families and friendships. Um, empty hearts will be filled and relationships will blossom. Uh, this will be a year of uh, prodigals. Well, actually, empty hearts will be filled and relationships will, prosper, will blossom. But there's a lot of people that are desiring relationships. I'll actually add a little bit to it. Um, Seemed, seemed like I prophesying marriages and different things, but I, I was saying there's a lot of marriages that are going to actually happen in 2016. God is connecting people in a way um, in marriages. Hopefully, it's the right word to share when I prophesy in marriages, but at the same time. You know, uh, let me say something. When God wants to say something, like, you know, uh, Mark is, a, um, before he finishes this word, Mark is a tried and true prophet. How many of you enjoyed Mark last month if you were here and he ministered? Because we couldn't get here because we were snowed in. 
Sometimes where I live, we get snowed in before you do. You know, and I didn't know what to do. I was just like, you know, what do I do? What do I do? And then Lauren called to check on me. And then I said, uh, I, I think it was the day before or something. But then I called Mark. And I said, Mark. God said, the Lord said, call Mark and have him take the meeting. So I did. And you just don't know how relieved I was. Not that I didn't, you know, have to do the meeting. But that there was somebody that we could trust, that moves in the gifts, in teaching and preaching and the prophetic, that we can trust that knows what they're doing. Okay, as a, as a minister that ha that's brave enough to come up to the front, take the mic and speak. A lot of you carry those gifts, but I hand you the microphone and you panic. You go, and you put it down here, and you back up. You see what I'm saying? Give it to Mark and he, he just knows what he's doing. You know? And, uh, but whatever he gives tonight, if one part of it doesn't pertain to you, the next part will. But there might be somebody in here that's waiting for God to bring on a mate. And that word's going to life them. Nothing is wrong or given at the wrong time. When the Holy Spirit said he has a word for 2016, it's for the bride of Christ that encompasses the whole bride. And we listen to it. And how many of you know that you grab onto that part you love? That's me, that's me, that's me. And how many of you can raise your hand and you can admit that when, a, when you're in any kind of meeting and a prophet's speaking, the part that means something to you, that's what you remember. And you talk about. That's because prophecy given I could ask right now, after he gives this word, I could have each one of you stand up and it will mean something else to eat. Every single one will have a different meaning when it meant to them. Because the Bible says that. It's of no one person's interpretation. As he speaks to each one of us personally. So Mark, you speak everything they gave you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Along with being restoration for families and friendships, the empty hearts being filled, I, I was seeing that, you know, relationships, but I, I was also seeing seeing marriages. It was just like, I don't always share the word, I didn't even write that into my word, but I was just, I was like seeing all these people being married in 2016, not that we're prophesying awesome. people. Yeah, it's, it was, a, you know, just, just an awesome thing. You know, I had never seen you know, obviously, God desires us to be connected as we desire to be, but there, were, there was something about 2016 that was above and beyond when it came to that. Um, I was also hearing this will be a year of prodigals returning back to God and to families. Um, I was hearing striving times will instead become harvest and celebration times. There's probably a few people in here I've shared this word, you know, through the prophetic and healing teams. Um, be prepared for the different and for the unexpected. Be open to God shifting, moving, and rearranging things on the inside of you. When he's done on the inside, it may feel like you're living in a new house or even in a new location. Not necessarily you're getting a new house, but living inside your, your own body. It, everything begins to feel different. Everything looks different. Um, that was the feeling that I had as I was receiving the word. Um, I was hearing spiritual and natural op opportunities abound. Spiritual and natural opportunities. There's going to be opportunities that come before you. You just said something. I didn't hear what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Speak up, Mark. Hey, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hey, Mark. Let me comment on that. Uh, somebody asked or how, whatever her name is, asked her uh, about the Holy Spirit. She goes, I don't know who that is. <laughs> 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 she didn't get saved. Yeah, and it was so funny. So when that came up, I have no information. It made me laugh because I said, now that's part of the prophetic because there's people out here, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any information in my mind to get that in my heart. <laughs> No, no problem. 
<laughs> but then, in the midst of that, I begin to hear him say, approach this new year with a large container of expectation. You know, and I was seeing people approach, they approach it with a glass or a pitcher. You know, you've heard the teaching, you know, God will fill whatever you bring. And that's what I was seeing. And it was just like he was saying, I was seeing myself, it was almost like he was showing me, carry, carry a 50-gallon 50, 50 drum with you into this new year because, it, because God has things to fill, you know, in this particular new year. Your expectation, a lot of it, governs a lot of these good things that you're, that you're hearing. So there's a participation you know, that you have with what God is saying. It's not just all, oh, hey, I have no expectation and, and God's going to pour it on me anyway. I, I don't believe that's the way he was presenting it. Um, dreams, desires, ministries, and businesses will be birthed and launched. I was, hearing, I was hearing heaven is pregnant. Birthing, birthing season is upon us. And then I also began to hear unresolved and persistent, persistent problems, if I can speak these out, persistent problems will be resolved. Yay. Many problems that have persisted for years will be erased and simply fall away. Can we all just say thank you, Lord? Thank you, thank you Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, I mean, it was just like I was seeing things falling away, things disappearing. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just words that I was hearing, but I just picked up a pen and actually I wrote all this out nonstop. He just really didn't, I really didn't have to stop and think about it. He just gave it to me that clear. I love that. <coughs> it doesn't always come that way, but this particular time it did. Um, I hear the words, come out and go forth. This is not a time to fear, shrink back or hide, uh, but this is a time to possess and to reap. Yes, fear, terrorism, moral decay, economic issues are like talking giants in the land. Yet I say, come out of your hiding and withdrawn places. Begin to reap and possess. And then I began to hear him say, did I not do miracles for Israel in spite of their failings and mistakes? So I will do great miracles in the United States and the earth. My people, lift up, lift up your eyes, your help. And then I was hearing, your help, your miracles, comes from me, the Lord. Amen. There are many things that are screaming impossible and no hope. Israel cried out in these and impossible and no hope times, and they saw me, they saw heaven. Answer with miracles and astounding answers. This is a season of astounding answers. This is also a season of great opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The fruit of opportunity comes as you seize upon it with action. These opportunities that come before you, it's, it's like you're going to feel encouraged by God, but he's saying, grab a hold of that. You know, it's, a, it's almost like I would, as I would say this now, as, as you grab a hold of it, it actually takes you into it. It brings you into the very thing that God has, but unless you laid your hand on it, that opportunity is not, is not blessing your life. This is also a season of great opportunity. The fruit of opportunity comes as you seize upon it with action. Harvest comes, comes, if I can talk, Harvest comes from going forth and laying hold. Possession comes by stepping forth, by standing on and occupying the ground. And then I began to hear birthing comes, as a lot of women might know. Birthing comes by pushing at the right time. And then I began to hear him say, this is the time for action. This is the time to see the fruit of the pregnant heaven birth forth in your life, country, and world. That's what I began to hear him say. And you had mentioned that you, I do have another word for 2016. It was like I was standing in front of a mountain, as you might want to call it, of revelation. And I, I was seeing this, but then like I could look and I could see, well, there's another side to this mountain and there's another side to this mountain. 
you understand what that means? And God says, no, look at this side of the mountain because that's what I want to, that's what I want you to focus on. But it seemed like he gave me another side if it's good to share. Yes. It's fairly, fairly short. <clears throat> this is what tonight's about, the prophetic, okay? Okay. Another side. But, you know, another side of what he's doing at this mountain is 2016 and what he would be doing in 2016. You know, there's a lot of times as you go to a mountain, one side of the mountain looks one way, you walk around to the other side, and it's like, well, is this the same mountain? It looks like a totally different mountain. So as he was giving me this, and once in a while I'd say, oh, I see that over there. Oh, I see this side over here. This was another side that he actually gave me for 2016. I was here in 2016 will be a year of adventurous journey and discovery. I was hearing destinies will be revealed. I'll, I'll let you know what God may have called you to a little bit. But as, as you begin to seek him, you're going to begin to find a fullness of your destiny, of what God has called you to do and to be is going to be revealed in this year of 2016. Um, I was also hearing this was really profound. I was hearing Revelation in 2016 will double. Really, God, that is wow. that is. I don't think I've ever heard I that. Grab onto that. I've never heard that anywhere. But at the same time, I was like, that is that is really profound. Um, Elijah and Elisha. That would that would be very good. Yeah, yeah. But it was just like, but I, I mean, I could just feel it. It was just like this pregnant heaven, and it was this like. And I've been seeing the, the pregnant heaven that's, for lack of a better word, been bulging all through 2015. And I keep looking at it, and I'm like, oh, it's getting ready to break forth. And he began speaking, and this is, this is pregnant heaven. Um, revelation will double. Things that were, that were vaguely seen will be unveiled in full light. It was almost like I, I was seeing, in the older days, they would cover furniture up. You know, was a lot of times you can tell what the furniture looks like by the shape of you know what's covering it. But I was seeing him walking in the room and beginning to jerk the covers off of things that has to do with the revelation. Um, but but things that were just like well, it's just not clear that has, has to do with destinies in people's lives. It's like he's up, up pulling these covers off now so that they can be fully seen. Um, and then. This, this was a funny one here. I see God much like, because uh, I was trying to, because I saw Father God with an Easter basket full of Easter eggs. And, and I was like, well, that's really interesting. I would never, never come up with that. I see God much like a parent hiding Easter eggs for children. Uh, surprises and blessings to be discovered. And I was seeing him going down a trail much like you know, woods or the park, you know, if any of you have had kids, grandkids, and you've been, you know, Easter eggs for, and you always hide them. And, and that's when I, I was watching it. He said, yeah, I'll hide them so that they can find them. If you're kids, you never hit them too hard, you know, so that they couldn't find them. But obviously walking down the trail is part of the important, important part, you know, to find these Easter eggs. Walking with God is really important for him to be able to bless you and you to find these it didn't surprise us. Mark, uh, yeah. eggs represent birth too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a basket full, and they represent, uh, you know, egg. Sure. You know, it's a representation of life. Yeah. But, like but, he was, but he was just this happy, fun parent. He yeah. was just hiding these eggs. And I know he lives outside of time, but it was almost like he was saying, I've gone into 2016, and I have just hidden these, these fun surprises. In I believe that. And when you've seen kids find Easter eggs, you go, uh, and they're just they're just thrilled and they squeal. And, you know, there should have a lot of bad things happen in the world, and it doesn't mean everything is perfect in 2016. But he's going, expect these things. These are really good things. Um, he says, I've gone ahead and pre-prepared, if that's a word. Um, I see rearrangement, once again, shifts and transition. Um, I hear him say, and I wrote this out my hand, I haven't really actually, but the language isn't, isn't perfect. I didn't put up the language, I was just writing it. Uh, I hear him say, take your places. It's time. 
uh, much like it would be someone, you know, the director would say, take the stage, you know, take your places, you know, things are getting ready to happen. <coughs> um, so I was hearing it's a time of reordering and repositioning. I see that in the church, but at the same time, I, this was more of seeing what he's doing in society and what he's doing in the world. Uh, he says, what I've been developing <coughs> in my sons and daughters will be brought out in all areas of society. Uh, the enemy has, de has destroyed long-standing pillars of standards. You know, and I think we've seen in the world, in the United States, a lot of standards that have been eroded away, cracked away, toppled over, and we're looking and going. And actually, it seems like Jesus wants me to speak on that for a moment, if it's okay. Um, there's been a lot of standards. We're a Christian country. You know, so that, that was something that we were founded upon. That was one standard, you know. This is what we believe in God we trust. You know, there was all of these pillars that our founding forefathers um, erected and placed, you know, within our government, within our society. You know, you see the Ten Commandments everywhere. Obviously, there's a lot of that that's trying to be toppled away if you watch any of that in the news. But what I began to see him doing with people, seems like he wants to get away from the word and, and to speak it. Um, there's people that he's raising up in these areas of society, you know, whether it be government, whether it be business, you know, whether it be medicine, education, arts, media. Um, I think there's a teaching out there, the seven mountains of society, that type of uh, that type of thinking. He's raising up people, and it's like there's there's these new pillars that are being established. And though it looks like our some of our foundation from the country has actually been wiped out, God says, maybe go back to hear what he said. Uh, he says, do not think my influence in society is being removed. But I, but I established and I am bringing forth a new breed of pillars and standards in society. Government, government's another one. Um, this is this is something that we were not seeing yet. But this is back when he said, "Okay, take your places." There's people that have been prepared. There's people that have been matured and grown that they begin to actually fill in and become these pillars in society and begin to reestablish something's new. It's like the old, but it's new. If, if that makes sense. Um, if I'm getting this correctly, that's what I'm seeing him doing in society. Um, I was also seeing, actually I was standing, it was almost like a vision, but it was a prophetic vision, not open eye. But I was seeing two big tall buildings, it was like they were 50 foot tall, kind of one, and I was seeing a bridge being built across them. And I began looking and asking, what is that guy? That is really weird. He said, well, one of the church and one the world. And I was like, well, I should have known that, but I didn't have done when I looked at it. But I'm also seeing that there is, there are people going across the high places in the world. And there's like a bridge, much like you'd see it going across the highway through the light rail system or something, but it was way up, you know, 50 stories tall. And there was this moving of the church over into these places where he says take your places. But a lot of these places are taken are very high position. They're they're right next to some of the highest leadership, some of the biggest making decision makers in our country. You know, and, and I was going, this is really cool that. But then I was seeing them going over to the church side. And I was seeing this moving back and forth like in a way that, that puzzled me. And, and it was like, well, this is really cool, God. There, there's a flow back and forth between <laughs> high-level things in the world and the church. I think I had shared a word last time about the church and business and a lot of people coming to the church for answers. And I believe that's what I'm hearing. Hopefully this, this comes together and makes sense. I see it, but there, I really had 
plan on giving this part of the word, but it seems good. Um, good things, good things. But this is about what's happening in society as we view the, the other face of the mountain, even in our government. Um, really enjoyed the, the word by Johnny Enloe that uh, Lord has uh, shared with me. A lot of that after I listened to it, I was like, hey, a lot of that fits fits some of the things that uh, God had been showing me and giving me. And if you, somebody really wants to hear, I believe, a really accurate word from 2016 that even covers residency and elections, uh, Johnny Enloe was a really was a really good prophetic word. If you look him up, you can probably find him. Johnny E N L O W, if I can remember that, which one you did, I guess. Uh, yeah, but that was 2016. Good things for 2016. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I love the the revelation doubly because that's what we need. We need it to happen in all parts of society, not just the church. We need God to bless the believer and the unbeliever. You know, if it rains on the believer and the unbeliever, if Jesus, when he walked on the earth, healed those that didn't even know him yet, he hadn't died for them, <clears throat> didn't even know him as Savior. And he healed them, fed them, brought deliverance to them. Why wouldn't he do it now? Why wouldn't he? We get it backwards. We think we become like, <clears throat> do you, have you ever seen one of those shows? I couldn't stand them. I watched it once or twice. It was too, talk about graphic in a, in, in a way of, uh, of hatefulness, uh, Bridezilla. You know, the brides, when they're going to be brides and then they go yes. cuckoo birds. Yes. <clears throat> Everything, are, you ever seen it? That's true. Well, it was a half hour or an hour, a little thing where they're becoming the bride and they're being mean to everybody and they want the perfect cake, the perfect this, the perfect that. The dresses have to be perfect. <coughs> and they go nuts. And they think it's all about them. Well, we don't want to be bridezilla. <clears throat> God says he came to save the lost the sick, the hurting, the wounded. We're already in the fold. We already have eternity. We have everything is there for us. We got it made. We really do. Can you imagine when the Lord returns, those that don't know him, what a shock it will be for their systems? I can't even imagine. It. And I want to see as many people get saved as possible. So we don't want to be like the spoiled bride. But she wasn't spoiled by her husband. He wasn't even her husband yet. Jesus is her husband. But that bride, everything was about her. Everything was about her. What she wanted, how she felt, which should be happening to her. And she started focusing on herself instead of on the bridegroom. And she became selfish, self-centered, uncaring and unloving, <clears throat> while the world was dying all around her. Instead of leading them to the Lord and speaking hope into their lives, she was criticizing them. I couldn't help but when you were given a part of your word to think about Israel. Everybody's always telling us, pray for Israel, pray for Israel. You're blessed if you pray for Israel. Well, if you think about it, Israel's in a mess. God wants to redeem her. So if he wants us to pray for Israel and his redemptive plan for her, and she's the apple of his eye, why wouldn't he want to redeem us? The bride of Christ. And also throw America in there. Got to see the bigger picture. We're, we're being sold a bill of goods of fear. I'm not, I'm not taking it. You can't afford to take it. 
or you'll be afraid to do anything and everything. You'll never, ever do what you're called to do because you'll be too fearful to do it. You'll always wait for better times. Better times. Well, we just, you know, we better wait for better times. And so we won't do anything. I heard uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, was last night, I was watching it, and uh, he was talking about living your life on cruise control. Anybody, anybody see that? See it back there, yeah. Interesting, only one person besides me? Wow. Anyway. <clears throat> And so that means I could preach that message and nobody <laughs> stole that from Kenneth Coleman. <laughs> Kenneth wouldn't care. He'd say, preach it, preach it, you know? Yeah. But he was talking about living your life on cruise control. And it meant a lot to me because uh, if, if you're anything like me this year, um, who's in survival mode? You're just surviving, you're just hanging on. Yeah, cruise control. You got the cruise control on. And we're just, you know, and he said you can't go forward when you're on, when your life's on cruise control. You can't go forward because you'll live in fear and you won't step out into anything that God has for you. I really could relate to it in my own life, you know. It was like, okay, let's see. Just let my ministry stay like it is. I've never promoted it. I found out I'm wrong. The Lord told me I'm wrong. I've never promoted my ministry. <clears throat> now, not an evil promotion. He doesn't want me to promote my, my ministry in an evil manner. But i got to come up to speed. Isn't that right? Get it off of cruise control and, you know, put it in a different gear and go. You know, my son said, get on, get on uh, Facebook and let them know you're having meetings. Or whatever it is you get on. Is that what it is? Yeah. And you let them know. I saw you on that. Well, you saw me on there, but it wasn't me. I know that. Yeah. So. I mean, it's not me surely saying something. Because if it was me, you'd be hearing the word of God and prophecies and stuff. So my son said, Mom, you need to get on there, and people need to know you're having these meetings, and you need to promote your own meetings and tell them what, what the Lord is saying. What's the matter with you, Mom? It's 2015. That's what it is. <laughs> so then when I was praying, uh, not even about that, then uh, when I was talking to Jill, my friend Jill that lives in. You guys remember Jill and Michael if you came to the conference? Yep. And, uh, we, and so I told her, and she said, surely the same thing. She said, I never promoted myself. She said, never. I just never promoted myself. You know, I, I just... She goes, what have we been living in, the dream world? Like somebody's going to see us and, you know? Say, oh, I really like your gift. I want to promote you, you know? And so we were talking about it. And how, how you do it effectively where it blesses God, it blesses people, and it's not about just blessing yourself. I've always seen self-promotion as, as not as evil. I viewed it that way. But that's not always the case. Then I heard Joyce Meyer say that her son said to her, Mom, if you don't come up into the new millennium and you don't pull your ministry up to what's going on now, you're going to lose, all, you're losing people as it is, and you're going to lose people because you're not in the, you're not in the, you're not in the real world right now. You're still preaching back here, or you're still the lighting, praise and worship. She was talking, he was talking about all that. Spruce this up, spruce that, you know, her son is, you know, you know. And uh, she took it to the Lord, and the Lord told her, he's right. You're not putting anything in for this generation to relate to. So I said, so I was talking to somebody about it, not Joe, but somebody else couple weeks ago before I got this this part of the revelation and I said well I might not be up to speed like the big boys 
but I hear from God. And I know that. That I hear from God. So I'm up in speed in that. I don't have to, I gotta hear from God, I gotta hear from God. I hear from God, God uses me prophetically. So that's in place. So that's why I realized just uh, maybe advertising the meetings or like we're in the bulletin now, right? Uh, get, getting the, the word out that we're here. That's not a bad thing. A bad thing would be if I was pretending I had words that I don't have. <laughs> See, I had, I had it mixed up. You can, you can paint your office and put some new furniture in there. Right, Vicki? You can get a new phone. Anybody here have a rotary phone still? <laughs> Anybody here have punch button phone? Well, I did. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Now somebody gave me this. Apple. I have six at the top. The, the new one. They gave yeah, come, uh, people that have a company and everything said, God wants you to come up to, you know. And they not only gave it to me and bought it for me, they're paying for it monthly. And I got 15 gigabytes on it. What are, what are they? You know those are there? And then my friend Arlene has one, and she can't, uh, she doesn't even use up her one. And I got 15, which means I can pull up a bunch of stuff, right? Yep. If I knew how to do it. I can store a bunch of stuff and pull a, stuff, a bunch of stuff up if I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Give me a little time. I'm trying to come up to the new millennium <laughs> with the phone and stuff like that. So it's okay to, to, to uh, get yourself back up to, to speed. It's bad when you pretend. I had him confused. Jill and I were, you know, we're like, what, what have we been doing? You know? You know, we have these top-notch prophets saying, you girls should, you girls should be all over the world by now and going every, you know? And we're like, well, Jill has, she's international. She just, she was in Africa. In August, she was in England in December, you know? But they told her she more. She should be doing more. She should be every, you know. And so now we just said, okay, you know, if that's what you want, what you know, that type of thing. So what is it that you want to do? And what what does that have to do with what I was talking about before? Everything, because we're crying out to God for answers. Are we not like the ladies that needed the finances? What is it that you need that you've been crying out to God for? What hasn't happened yet? And it's way past, in your opinion, it's way past due. Because if he's given you the power, the authority, the anointing, the giftings you carry, he's given you everything's in place. What are you doing with it? What am I doing with it? What are we doing with it? Now, I'm going to be honest with you right now. Everybody look up. Put your eyes up to heaven. We need the money <laughs> to do what you called us to do, right, you guys? So that's what we need to be calling in, and that's what Mark's word was about. That's coming in, and things are going to come in, that we're going to need and all that. So we need the finances to come in, do we not? The kingdom money. Huh? The kingdom money. The kingdom money. You cannot do anything uh, that you'd like to do, like um, if you want to start a business. You have to have capital. Is that not true? So it takes some money to start a business. It takes money to have a meeting. It takes money uh, to advertise. It takes money to do everything. In my, it, just about everything, right? So it does take the finances. So that's what we need to ask God. That's what's not in place. And guess what? He just now said to me. Do you know why that in most of 
The kingdom of God, the money's not in place because it's not in place in the natural. America's money's a mess, is it not? So we need to ask God to heal the financial realm. There needs to be a healing in the financial realm. He just now gave me that. So if things got to be in place for us to be able to do what we're called to do. Now we don't want to tire you out. But everything that I'm preaching, God is speaking, what Mark gave, the Lord is speaking. The Lord has things to say about what he wants to do in 2016. I told him that I am not interested in my meetings. I am not interested in anything but that people get healed in some area of their life. 